It's funny and sad when you think about it. The last time anybody saw Vince McMahon, he was crushed by his million dollar mania set and just as he gets back, he suffers an even more devastating injury, putting him out for more months. Only this one with Randy Orton looked more realistic and brutal. I haven't seen Mr. McMahon in six months since the tragic accident. That tragic accident took place seven months ago, not six, as we are in January and the accident took place in June, which was seven months ago. <laughs> nice one, Jerry. Well, I'm happy to be back. For only 15 minutes. Night is about business. Um, isn't literally every single Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-view, and house show business? If so, it's pointless to say that tonight of all nights is about business compared to the others. Nice suit. This business of Chris Jericho pleading his case about being fired recently has already started off with awkward small talk. Same to you, sir. You look immaculate this evening. Always makes me rotate my eyes in vexation whenever Chris boasts about his resourceful aptitude for hoisting communications. And you guys just said what the fuck, didn't you? That I'm the 2008 Superstar of the Year. As if that means anything at all, considering we are in 2009 now. You are a businessman, sir. You can clearly tell that Chris Jericho is trying too hard here. Might want to stop before you start embarrassing yourself. Stephanie and Vince McMahon are gonna run and roll together! And the nightmare begins. Villain walks around the victim in an attempted intimidating fashion cliche. Something usually reserved for the movies when the hero confronts the villain. Apologize. Security. Oh. And wrestler is told to apologize and initially refuses only to give in at the risk of getting ejected by security cliche. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest, this is a scene we have seen way too many times in the WWE where someone in power has a wrestler by the balls and humiliates the hell out of them for their own amusement. It all starts with pretending not to hear them, to having them repeat themselves, to having them get on their knees and beg. To please forgive me. Sarcasm from Chris. He's not even trying to hide it. Also, what chance? It's not good enough. <sighs> We're gonna be here all night, aren't we? Randy Orton, can you please come out here and kick someone's head off already? Forcing anybody to beg for their job on their knees is worth three sins in my book. At that point, I would have just left. I know I've said a lot of mean things about all of you. And I know that I will continue to say even more mean things about all of you. I have yet to call you guys gelatinous tapeworms, among other words in my thesaurus. Worms by cockles. You forgot to say of my heart because a cockle itself is a certain mollusk with a strong shell. Your daughter here slapped me in the face for no reason at all. So calling Stephanie McMahon a complete nobody and taunting the hell out of her is what you call no reason to get slapped in the face? You're lucky she didn't kick you right in your Orton's. Your daughter here has popped you out a couple of grandkids. What a way for Randy Orton to make giving birth sound weird and hilarious by using the term popping out. Creative on the part of Randy. I want a piece of you Randy Orton sign. Keep her sexual fantasies to yourself. You would be maybe a gym teacher in St. Louis. Drop a like on this video if you watched this segment and started imagining what Randy would look like as a gym teacher instead of a wrestler. Looks funny in my view. That sinister look from that evil snake is enough to put chills down anyone's spine. Just goes to show how damn good Randy portrayed his role. Yeah! Oh! Oh! Well, holy fuck! Throwing three sins off because shit just got real with those kicks. Vince sold, no doubt, the greatest punt kick in WWE history very well in the best storyline of 2009. Randy Orton vs. the McMahons is still one of my all-time favorite rivalries.